So a nitrile can also be a, a microacceptor. And again, we could attach over here. talk about what the name of this functional group is. This will come up more when we talk about benzene. This is what's called a nitro group. So actually, when we talk about benzene, we're going to have to learn what the Lewis structure is for a nitro group. It turns out that this is the bond line, this is the Lewis structure for a nitro group. It's kind of surprising that nitrogen has no lone pairs and has a positive charge. Overall, the nitro is neutral, but there's got to be a positive and a negative charge. Well, notice what we can do here. Once again, we can pull the electrons away from this carbon over here, this beta carbon, so to speak. So this is, again, nucleophilic. Sorry, electrophilic. And again, we could have a nucleophile attack here. So this would also be a microacceptor. All right, so here's a whole bunch of different microacceptors that you might have to watch out for on the exam. What do these have in common? They all have a carbon-carbon double bond adjacent carbon-carbon double bond, then a single bond, and then another pi bond. Carbon-carbon double bond, single bond, and then another pi bond. Single bond, 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 another pi bond. So that's what the, all these have in common. And because of those structures, they all have resonance structures where there's a positive charge on the beta carbon. So these would all be Michael acceptors. Would this be a Michael acceptor? No. No. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the characteristics. Notice that a Michael acceptor must have a carbon carbon double bond. It must have a carbon carbon double bond. The other pi bond doesn't have to be a carbon carbon double bond, but one of the double bonds has to be carbon carbon. Could we make this into a Michael donor? What would we do to make this into a Michael donor? Um, a Michael donor? That would be the nucleophile in a Michael reaction. How could we make this into the nucleophile? Just, um, add a base right. to propane the alpha carbon. Then I think this is actually the one uh, we already saw an example of this. So this would be what we call a Michael donor okay. or the nucleophile. So this would be a good uh, Michael donor. Now the key thing is that in order for the Michael reaction to work, you want a kind of moderate nucleophile. Mm -hmm. You don't want a really unhappy nucleophile. You don't want a really strong nucleophile. For technical reasons, Michael reactions don't work with really strong nucleophiles. With a really strong nucleophile, you start to get a mix of products where you attack both the carbonyl and uh, the beta carbon. So we want a moderate nucleophile, so it's only going to attack the beta carbon. Well, what is it that's making this a rather moderate nucleophile is the two resonance structures. So we're not just going to, you're usually not going to use a normal enolate as a Michael donor. So, This would probably not be a good Michael donor. Okay. This is an enolate, but it's not as happy as this over here. This is too reactive. It's not going to give us a clean yield. This might prefer to attack the carbonyl instead okay. of attacking the beta carbon. So usually we need to have these 1,3 dicarbonyl enolates. Good Michael donors are usually moderate, moderate nucleophiles, and a good way to make them moderate is to be 1,3 dicarbonyls. An enolate with only one resonance structure, with only one oxygen, probably is not a good Michael donor. So I'll erase this. This is not a good Michael donor. So this up here is what we could call a beta diketone. It's a diketone, and one of the ketones is beta to the other one. Would this make uh, a moderate nucleophile, a moderate enolate? You could do the same trick yes. again. So this would also be good. This would be a beta keto ester. It's got a keto group and an ester group. But again, it's a relatively stable enolate. So this would also be a Michael donor.
How about this? Well, again, we can deprotonate this alpha carbon. Mm -hmm. And there really are two different resonance structures. You can kick the negative charge like this. Mm -hmm. Instead of kicking it onto an oxygen, you're kicking it onto a nitrogen. But there still is a resonance structure where the negative charge is on the nitrogen or a resonance structure where it's on the oxygen. So this also would be a good stabilized enolate. I guess we could call this a beta keto nitride. A beta keto nitrile. So this would also be a Michael Doe. Same deal here. This would be a beta diester. These names should seem logical. It's a diester because there's two ester groups and the negative charge, and one of the esters is beta to the other one. Again, this is stabilized by two different resonance structures. That would be a good Michael Donner. Here's something we talked about in the previous session. What's the name for this type of compound? That's a logical name, remember, ene because of the alkene double bond, and amine because of the nitrogen. We specifically use this name when the nitrogen is on the alkene carbon. Here we have the nitrogen on the alkene carbon. Now this does not have to be deprotonated to be a nucleophile. This carbon here is already nucleophilic. Do you remember what was our explanation that we gave a couple of sessions ago? Why is this carbon nucleophilic? Because there's a resonance where you would, uh, you would put a lone pair on the nitrogen. Is that correct? There's a resonance structure where, where you uh, where, where you could make the uh, well, it would make a double bond to the nitrogen, but it would give it a positive. Uh, so you're thinking about resonance. The way to clear that up is to actually draw the electron pushing arrows. Here's hopefully the resonance structure yeah, you're thinking yeah. about. Yes. The nitrogen can push its electrons this way, which pushes the pi bond onto here. That would end up putting a negative charge mm -hmm. on this carbon. Well, then this would be nucleophilic. So we, uh, we talked about this quite a bit a couple of sessions ago. We talked about how enamines, this carbon over here is nucleophilic. Not this one, yeah. but this one over here is nucleophilic um, because of that resonance structure. However, this is only a moderate nucleophile because there's also a resonance structure where there's no negative charge on this carbon. So this is a good Michael donor because it's a moderate nucleophile. It does have a resonance structure with a negative charge, but there's also resonance structures where there's no negative charge on the carbon. Actually, that's the same exact logic we used in all the other cases, right? There's a resonance structure where this has a negative charge in this carbon, but there's also a resonance structure where the negative charge is not on the carbon, where it's on this oxygen. So in all of these cases, these are all moderate nucleophiles because although there's one resonance structure where there's a negative charge on the carbon, there's also a resonance structure where the negative charge is someplace else. So in this case, there's a resonance structure where the whole thing is neutral. So this is, again, a good Michael donor. That's one thing we didn't talk about when we talked about enamines, that you can use them as a Michael donor. What's the name of this? An amine. This is an amine. This is ammonia. Oh, this sorry. is just ammonia. Here's a primary amine, secondary amine. These can all be Michael donors. They're not too strong of a nucleophile because they don't have negative charges. They're just donating their lone pairs. These are all decent Michael donors as well. Okay, so you should watch out for all these different types of Michael donors and acceptors on the exam. Okay. Um, these are all things that could give you this type of Michael addition. Hopefully you'll see a bunch of examples of this right. in the uh, test. So would these tend to attack the carbonyl carbon or the beta carbon? Uh, the beta carbon. Because they're Michael donors. Um, substituted amines like like hydrazine or hydroxyl amine attack the carbonyl carbon, but like I said, I don't think your instructor is talking about that. Okay. So we won't need to, that was in the other video, but your instructor isn't focusing on substituted amines, they're only focusing on regular amines. So regular amines are Michael donors and attack the beta carbon. Okay, okay. that's our time. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm 
or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.